Well, hello everybody and welcome back to the Colored Gemstone Academy. My name is Paul DC. You're watching Paul DC Gemstones YouTube channel. Now I mentioned that there is no spring break in Florida right now, but we're interrupting our own Colored Gemstone Academy to have our own indoor spring break. And what I'm doing this week, I think last week is when we finished the um, lesson four, which was part two of the four C's, which was cut. And next we'll be doing clarity next week, but in between we decided to have, and it's gonna be a treat for me and I hope that it'll be a treat for you. This is gonna be a little mini seminar on that famous mine called Sleeping Beauty Turquoise. And at the time that you are watching this, I was actually going back in time and looking at our calendars and Judy Kroll and me were filming the Sleeping Beauty mine almost 10 years ago to the day. It was, I believe, March 29th, 2010 and today is March 28th 2020 and in honor of that I'm just exactly as I was that day that we were doing some interviews wait a minute now I'm just exactly as I was when I was at the Sleeping Beauty mine but I don't think I need the sunglasses today so let me toss those aside so we were the last to, to ever film the Sleeping Beauty Mine, and it was really quite an awe-inspiring experience. Now, first of all, you may be wondering, where the heck is the Sleeping Beauty Mine, and where are all these mines that you're visiting all over the United States? Well, if you take a look on your screen, I'm going to show you a map of various turquoise locations, turquoise mining locations in the Southwest United States. Now, what we're going to focus on is look at the state of Arizona. And if you look at the state of Arizona and you look just under the N in Arizona, you'll see something that's like a lighter blue turquoise and then a darker blue turquoise. The lighter blue is the Sleeping Beauty turquoise and the darker blue is Castle Dome. That's a completely different one. But that's kind of centrally located where that mine is. And it's about, it's just east, maybe a couple of hours east of Phoenix and maybe an hour or a couple of hours north of Tucson, so pretty centrally located in the state of Arizona. And actually when you're going there, it's a place called Globe, and you pass through a town called Miami, Arizona. And Miami is the copper city, or the copper capital of the world. So that's where the mine resided in the state of Arizona. So if actually, now if you take a look at that same photo, and up in the left upper northwest border of Arizona, you will see the state of Nevada. And very close to Nevada is where the Kingman turquoise mines are located. Now the next logical question would be, how the heck did it get the name Sleeping Beauty Mine or Sleeping Beauty Turquoise? Well, we actually, and when we were at the mine, we had to drive a couple of miles, maybe five or six miles away from the mine, up on the opposite hillside and you can see the mountain range that looks like a woman reclining on her back. It is the profile of a woman and that is Sleeping Beauty and she is guarding all of the turquoise in that Sleeping Beauty mine. Now as we continue our discussion, I have said many, many times that you cannot have turquoise without copper. So we're gonna meet the former, I should say, leaseholder of the Sleeping Beauty Mine because it did close, of course, uh, in June 30th of 2012. So coming up on the eight year anniversary of the closing of that mine. I'm gonna introduce you to a gentleman by the name of Monty Nichols, who's a former leaseholder of the Sleeping Beauty Mine. And here's what he had to say about the copper mine that resides in Globe, Arizona. Now, while Sleeping Beauty Mine is still operating, as you can see today, uh, it really was a byproduct of a copper mine, pretty famous copper mine. I mean, we passed through the town of Miami called the Copper Center of the United States or Copper Center of the World mm. for that matter. Uh, if we take a look and we will, uh, this big open pit that we see here was once really where a lot of copper was extracted. That's correct. In the, prior to the 70s, this is Copper City's pit. Uh, they they mined it here and it closed about 1971, 1972. And that's a good lesson for all of us because you never know, honestly, how long we'll even have a treasure like a Sleeping Beauty mine to enjoy. So enjoy it while you can. Now continuing my conversation with Monty Nichols, a former leaseholder of the Sleeping Beauty turquoise mine. I said, of all the turquoise that is out there, in your opinion, what is it that makes Sleeping Beauty turquoise 
so special. And here's what he had to say. Most people obviously know the name Sleeping Beauty. Worldwide, it's famous, not just here in the United States, but everybody around the world knows it's the premium turquoise. What makes Sleeping Beauty so special? Well, it's the clarity. You know, Sleeping Beauty is one of the only turquoises in the world that is clear and doesn't have inclusions, it doesn't have rock in it, doesn't have matrix. And because of that, it makes it rare, and China hasn't been able to develop that, and neither Nevada or Mexico. And so uh, Sleeping Beauty is special, and because it is, it commands more money. So when Monty uses the, uh, the word clarity, and that's not, not something we think of when we think of turquoise, but he's talking about this. This is a specimen of a robin's egg blue color turquoise, and when he, when he says clarity, there's no visible matrix, there's no dark spots, no light spots. It is a pretty pure robin's egg blue turquoise. So kind of continuing in that vein, in that conversation I had with him, I said a lot of people have, over the years have talked about Persian turquoise and how famous that was. You know, one of the probably the earliest mines ever were the Persian turquoise mines. So I said, I've heard that sometimes people compare this to the earlier Persian turquoise. And here's what Monty had to say about that. In the very infancy of Sleeping Beauty, everybody thought, well, that was the Persian turquoise. But really, they're, they were almost one and the same in, in terms of the look. As, exactly. In fact, uh, there's a strong rumor that uh, to this day, a lot of people who come and buy this take it back into Iran and they sell it as Persian luckily, turquoise. Luckily, those two turquoises are you know, supposedly the only ones that have that look. And so if you're getting Persian or if you're getting Sleeping Beauty, you, you can't lose. Yes, indeed. A lot of times it is confused for that famous Persian turquoise back in the day. But I wanted to continue the discussion just between us now. Because how do we reconcile what's happened since the mine closed 10 years ago, almost to the day? Well, June 30th, it will be 10 years. Um, and how do we know, how do we shop for Sleeping Beauty? How do we compare that with other turquoise? What do we do? What do we, what do we need to know? Well, first thing I want to talk about is something called stabilization. And almost, if you talk to any expert in the, in the world of turquoise, and I've, I've done this many times, I've visited many mines, and I say, well, what's, what percentage of turquoise would you say is stabilized? And they all have the same answer. Between 98 and 99% of the turquoise in the world is stabilized. Now, first of all, I want you to know that that is not a bad word. That is a very good word. Turquoise is a naturally porous material. Most turquoise is too brittle and doesn't take a great polish unless you first stabilize the material. Now, what does that mean? In most cases, they are impregnating that turquoise with a colorless resin to fill those pores. And if you don't do that very important step, it will absorb the, um, the oils and dirt from your skin. And that's why I remember getting a call on the air one time a number of years ago where somebody said, um, I had a turquoise piece from a long time ago and I looked at pictures back then and I'm looking now and the turquoise now is much darker. What's going on? And I said, well, that's because that turquoise probably wasn't stabilized. So it absorbed those oils in your skin from your skin over the years and it darkened in color. In fact, when you get a lot of Sleeping uh, Beauty rough, it's actually quite chalky and would be very, very brittle. You could probably snap it in half. Now this is a piece that has been stabilized. But let's talk about two different types of stabilization because that's what also makes Sleeping Beauty a little bit special. There was um, a number of years ago, I wanna say it was in the 1970s, where we started to hear about this method of stabilizing turquoise called the Zachary method. I think back then they called it Zachariah uh, and it was really not, um, that was not an accurate term because the gentleman who invented this process was uh, an electrical engineer. He was also an entrepreneur and he grew up in the turquoise business and he wanted to figure out, and his name was James Zachary, and he wanted to find a way of stabilized turquoise without putting plastics or resins or any artificial means into the stone. Well, he developed that method, it is proprietary, and it was used chiefly in Sleeping Beauty turquoise, although it has been used in some other turquoise since then. So that's one thing that you need to know that makes Sleeping Beauty pretty special is that special method that was used to do that. Another th reason that this is important to know, 
I think that still to this day, although not everybody was required to use that method to stabilize Sleeping Beauty, most people did. Um, but some people might still use something that uses resins. And I'm, I'm using this, and I'm only using this example, because this was a product that I was instrumental in trying to bring to the market maybe three or four or five years ago. And I uh, trademarked it at that time as Sonora Beauty. And that was a friend of mine, actually, you've all heard of Ernie Montoya. And he was em employing some technology companies to figure out a way to replicate what Sleeping Beauty looked like. And they did, uh, and this is an, an example of the finished product. You really wouldn't be able to tell the difference between that and Sleeping Beauty, which is why I always disclosed it. But I want to tell you another story and give you an example. I have a lighter in my hand. And the reason I have a lighter in my hand is I remember being at the Tucson Gem Show a number of years ago with a gem expert, turquoise expert I know, by the name of Peter Vida. And he was, we were going to booths together to look at some rough. And this one gentleman talked about his number eight turquoise and he had, and this is a famous Nevada mine. And he said he had some that was cuttable and it was not stabilized. And Peter took a look at it and said, yeah, I think it is stabilized. And he said, no, I, I'm sure whoever he bought it from told him it wasn't. And he said, you got a lighter? You got a match? And he says, okay. And so we did this little test where we took the turquoise to the flame. Not going to do it for a really long time. But I want you to see. Uh, you can see it smoke, see the smoke coming up out of that? That's because of the resin that was inside. And you might see how it's blackened on the edge now. And that's, you know, those, those oils in the resin are flammable. And so that's one of those tests if you suspect has your turquoise been stabilized? Not, not that I would take it to a piece that's in a piece of jewelry because you don't want a big old black mark on that. But that's one way to tell that. So the Zachary method is, is really important. But going back into the history of what happened with Sleeping Beauty is very important to remember. For many, many years, it was in and around, especially when I was dealing with it in the early days that I was on Shop NBC and then uh, Shop HQ and then Evine. Um, <clears throat> it's about $100 a pound. That's how you bought, bought the rough. About $100 a pound. And that never seemed this way. I always loved the stone. And um, so I started to do more and more of it on the shopping channel. And I started to work with Monty Nichols, who you met earlier on this video. And I remember calling him one day and said, listen, I want to do much, much more with you. And this is after I filmed with him. I think that we can make this a really, really big deal in the United States and in the world if we do more of this on the shopping channels. And he kind of chuckled. I called him. This was in December of 2011. So literally six months before the mine closed. And he said, Paul, do you know how much we took out of the mountain uh, about in the month of November? And I said, I have no idea. He said, we took out three buckets. Now those buckets are those, those like five gallon paint buckets. And so you're talking about maybe 150 pounds, maybe 200 pounds in the whole month of November. That's not enough to keep the lights on. So I knew that something was happening then and I started to warn everybody on the air at that time. I said, listen, don't know how much longer we're gonna be able to be selling Sleeping Beauty Turquoise on the shopping channel here. And then lo and behold, on June 30th of 2012, they announced that the Sleeping Beauty Turquoise Mine had closed forever. Within a week, the price of the material, the rough in Sleeping Beauty went up 300%. It went, well, went up 200%, went up from, uh, no, 300%, from $100 to $300. After about a month, that same material is trading at about $1,000 a pound. And then by the time I got to Tucson, which would have been February, it was trading at $2,500 to $3,000 a pound. Six months later, it was up to four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000 a pound, and the race was on. <clears throat> well, this mine still hasn't reopened. In fact, I've heard people talk about, oh, I went to the mine, oh, I was talking to people outside the mine, they were selling me rough. All of that is completely inaccurate because that mine has been what we call reclaimed. That means that they had to take the mine, they had to fill it in, 
never to be mined again. The land is rec reclaimed, the trees are being planted, it's becoming a park. Uh, and that is, that is it. So the question becomes, how do you as a consumer, what do you need to know about Sleeping Beauty and how do you get it? Well, first of all, I think it's really, really important to trust your sources. I have some friends that we affectionately are known as the Three Amigos on Shop HQ, and I know those guys are reputable. The reason I'm, I align myself with those guys is because I know that if they're telling you that they got something, they've done all the vetting that needs to be done. When I'm sourcing any Sleeping Beauty today, I not only go to people that I know, I take it one step further. I say, yes, I know you, I've done business with you a long time, but I still want you to sign a piece of paper, a legal contract that says, this came from the Sleeping Beauty mine in Globe, Arizona, when it was still being mined. And that's it. You have to trust your source, you have to know what's going on, but it's, it truly is a national treasure. I think that Sleeping Beauty is one of the most amazing turquoise gemstones you can get and I and I do love all of my turquoise but I have a special place in my heart for the famous Sleeping Beauty turquoise mine in Globe, Arizona. Well I hope you enjoyed our little spring break away from the Colored Gemstone Academy. We will resume next week when we have part three of the, port, of the four C's and that will be on clarity of gemstones, ironically, as we follow the clarity of the Sleeping Beauty. So that will be on, I guess that will be the first Saturday in April. So I'll see you then. Remember, if you like what you're seeing, please hit the subscribe button and also look for the little bell and click on that and it will let you know anytime a new video in the Colored Gemstone Academy is available for you to watch. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you.